Season 2 of Overwatch 2 has just been released, and with a whole new season comes a whole new set of patch notes. Starting off with the Damage Roll Passive. The Damage Roll Passive, if you remember, gave you movement speed and a reload speed. The movement speed has now been completely removed, but the reload speed has been increased from 25% to 35%. The movement speed passive was incredibly powerful for characters such as Genji, Tracer, Hanzo, anybody who can use mobility to their advantage, but not so much for more stationary characters characters like Mei, Bastion, and Symmetra. And now with this increased reload speed, it could be beneficial for characters like Tracer. That's the only hero passive being worked on this patch. The support and tank passives have stayed the same. Moving on to characters, we have our new character, Ramatra. Ramatra is a tank, and we've already gone over his abilities before, so make sure to check out that video on Ramatra's abilities. He sure is to look like an insane tempo tank that is gonna have a lot of fun on the battlefield. Doomfist is getting a lot of changes to his kit. The main one going into his rocket punch. The impact damage range has been increased from 15 to 30 to 25 to 50, and the wall slam range has been reduced from 20 to 40 to 10 to 30. So that means that the initial punch is already dealing more damage than before, and if you get it on the wall, it'll deal a little bit more. So it's rewarding more players for just hitting the punch rather than comboing it with the wall. The empowered rocket punch wall slam stun has been reduced from 0.5 to 1 to 0.25 to 0.75, but not non-powered rocket punch will always stun for 0.25 seconds on a wall. So instead of having to charge up your rocket punch with your block, your rocket punch will always be stunning. His empower rocket punch knockback radius was reduced from 4 to 3, so enemies will not be going as far anymore. The minimum time before canceling has been reduced from 0.25 to 0.12, and the cooldown has been reduced from 4 to 3 seconds, but this apparently has been in the game since his rework. Power block is also getting some buffs. The cooldown has been reduced from 8 to 7 seconds. The duration increased from 2 to 2.5 seconds, and the minimum damage mitigated needed to get an empowered rocket punch has been reduced from 90 to 80. Meteor Strike is also gaining a buff. Now empowers his rocket punch when he lands, so he'll always have an empowered rocket punch when he uses his ult. And the slow has been increased from 2 to 3 seconds. And Doomfist's overhealth passive has now been increased from 150 to 200 maximum overhealth, and temporary health gained per target hit with abilities has increased from 30 to 40. So be on the lookout for the Doomfist meta because it sure seems like it. The next tank getting some changes is Junk. Queen. These look like to be buffs, but at the same time it seems like a nerf to her. Her hitbox has been increased by 12%, which is big for her as she was one of the smallest tanks. Now she's easier to hit with smaller projectiles. Her ult. Her ult has been minorly nerfed, but buffed. The ult duration has been reduced from 5 to 4.5 seconds, but the ultimate cost has been reduced by 10%, so you can get the ult a little bit faster, but it will last a little bit less. Her commanding shout cooldown has been reduced from 15 seconds to 14 seconds, nothing too crazy there, and her passive healing has has been increased from a multiplier of 1 to 1.25. So with her knife that is now from a 15 heal to a 19 heal, Junker Queen still not seeming to be able to get back to where she was when she was in beta, which was understandably overpowered. That's it for the tanks, moving on to damage. Our first damage hero getting some changes is Bastion. Bastion will be getting some buffs to his ultimate because his ultimate honestly didn't exist in season 1. The delay before his ult drops has been reduced from 1 to 0.6 seconds, so a 40% increase on the speed that the projectile dropped, which is insane. To combat that buff, the explosion damage has been reduced from 300 to 250. He no longer deals damage to himself in the ult, so you can ult yourself and you will still be alive. And the minimum delay between placing shots has been reduced by 20%, so you can spam those three shots a little bit faster. And his sentry turret has been buffed. The cooldown for reconfigure has been reduced from 12 seconds to 10 seconds. Up next is Sojourn. Sojourn has definitely been running the meta season 1, so hopefully these changes will bring her back in line with multiple other DPS heroes. The devs are claiming that she is not performing well in lower tiers, but in higher tiers she's a menace, so let's see what they're working with. All of her changes are with her primary fire and her right click. The energy delay duration has been reduced from 8 seconds to 5 seconds, so she now loses her charge faster. The secondary fire damage falloff starting range reduced from 70 to 40 meters, so no more cross map snipes anymore from Sojourn. Secondary fire critical critical rate damage multiplier has been reduced from 2 to 1.5, so that means she now does a base 190 headshot damage, so no more being able to kill a 200 HP hero with one tap. Secondary fire damage now scales linearly with energy from 30 to 130 damage. One energy converts to one damage. And Sojourn's gained buffs to her primary fire. The primary fire damage projectile has been increased from 9 to 10, and her overclock energy charge rate has been increased by 20%, so she's able to use more right-click ults. So it seems like she's gained nerfs but buffs at the same time, and I'm not gonna 
gonna be surprised if she's not dominating Season 2 of Overwatch 2. Our next damage hero looking at game changes is Symmetra. Symmetra has been one of the least played characters, but with one of the highest win rates, so it seems like they're trying to get more players interested in her while also making her more fun and fair. All of her changes are with her primary fire, Photon Projector. Her beam charge rate and decay rate has been increased by 20%, so instead of a 1.5 charge up, it's now 1 second, instead of a 3 second decay rate, it's now 2.4. So instead of being able to hold that charge forever, she now has to pick her fights and make sure she wins them. Primary fire ammo consumption rate has been increased from 7 to 10 per second, but primary fire now gains ammo from damaging barriers again from Overwatch 1. This was a huge nerf to Symmetra main, switching from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2, as one of her main playstyles was a tank buster, as she could destroy shields easily, have a full charged up beam, and just melt the tank. She is now able to do that again, but only if they're playing shield characters like Sigma, Reinhardt, Winston, and Ramatra. And also apparently, her turrets got stealth nerfed in Season 1 to 30 DPS, it seems like they got stealth buffed back to 40 DPS in Season 2, so be on the lookout for that as well. And the final damage hero gained some changes is Tracer. Tracer has had her primary fire damage increase from 5 to 6 per pellet, so Tracer is now going to be able to take those one-on-one -on -one duels easier and melt faces faster. So be on the lookout for a Doomfist Sojourn and Tracer meta. Moving on to supports. Unfortunately, supports, once again, don't get a lot of love this patch as there's only a couple changes. The first one is Ana. Ana's Sleep Dark cooldown has been reduced from 15 seconds to 14 seconds, so congrats Ana mains, you get one less second cooldown. Kiriko has the biggest changes coming to support, and they're mostly coming from her ultimate. Her arm hit volume with has been reduced by 15%. If you don't know this, there was a bug with her. If she got hooked by Roadhog, she could not die, essentially, because her hands are always in front of her, and her hand hitbox was so big that it was blocking headshots by Roadhog and other close-range characters. So that has been reduced by 15%. They've added an auto wall climb hero option, similar to Genji and Hanzo. Kitsune Rush, the ultimate cost has been increased by 10%, movement speed bonus reduced from 50 to 30%, and cooldown rate reduced from 3 to 2 times faster. Honestly, this ult is just ridiculous, and she should not have been released with the ult in that state, so these nerfs are definitely needed. Suzu is getting a buff, with the cast time reduced from 0.15 seconds to 0.1 seconds, so just a little bit quicker reaction time with Suzu. Kunai ammo increased from 12 to 15, and her TP quality of life, her ability input can now be held to activate, so you can just hold down shift and try to hover over anybody as quick as possible instead of having to click shift multiple times to try to teleport, so just an easier way to get away. And the final support change is Mercy. Mercy is just getting a little more survivability with her weapon. Her weapon swap time has been reduced from 0.5 to 0.35 seconds, so Battle Mercy, yay. And her ammo has been increased from 20 to 25. And the Season 2 map pool. The Season 2 map pool will be featuring all the same maps, except Hollywood and Watchpoint Gibraltar will be removed, and Rialto and Blizzard World will be added back, and our new map, Shambhali, Monastery as an escort map. Well, those are all of the patch note changes coming to Season 2 Overwatch 2. You can try them out right now as Season 2 of Overwatch 2 is out. What do you feel about these patch notes and the changes coming to them? What characters do you think will become meta? Is Ramatra broken? Is Doomfist about to become meta? Let us know in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching.